Today we're joined by Tim Harris, venue controller of Renning and District's Pindra Lagoon, the home of the Brute, the mighty mirror carp that's been out to over £50. You've done a bit of filming before though, haven't you, Tim? Yeah, I was an extra on uh, Pride and Prejudice. Well, this is a much bigger deal, mate. So when you're not checking people's tickets on Pindrewood and um, filming on Pride and Prejudice, <laughs> you've been known to catch a few big carp on the limit of the time you've had available to you, haven't you? So you've done quite well out of Pindrewood and a few of the other waters in that area. Um, and you've got one particular rig here that's served you very well. So could you sort of run us through it and tell us when and why you use it? Yeah, well, uh, the first season I fished it, Pinge with, it was quite weedy and a lot of the guys were fishing pop-ups on the clear areas, the gravel yep. uh, and a friend and I did quite well fishing bottom baits in, in the silt and the chod and uh, fishing tight to bed to bait and more bait. Right. So I realised from then that doing something different would, would be advantageous on that. Yeah, because it's quite a pressured water isn't it? So it the is, fish yeah, the fish have seen an mm. awful lot over the years. Uh, the second year a lot of the guys were fishing your normal sort of combi links with the coated braids and bottom baits. So in an effort to do something different again, I, uh, I wanted something with a, a rig with a, a stiff bottom bait yeah. that I could then fish, which would be different to what the majority of anglers would be doing. Right, yeah. And uh, I ended up using this, which is just, uh, it's the two-tone strip tee, so it's slightly stiffer than the normal strip tees. Yeah. A size five D7 just knotless knotted with the tag ends back through the iron blob to form a D. Yeah. Uh, and then the bait's tied on or pierced onto a rig ring. Okay. So you, I see you've whipped the knotless knot down to almost level with the point of the yeah, hook. Yeah, just in so front of the point. So it gives you quite a long D. Yeah, yeah, it does. And that'll give you the sort of movement if the fish tries to eject it. Yeah, yeah. Get the hook bait out of the way so the fish can't use that okay. to its advantage. So why did you choose to use generally a conventional stiff rig would be made of something like um, amnesia or even bristle filament. Why, why did you use, choose to use a semi-stiff coated braid instead of one of those materials for, for this rig? Well, when you're casting out, you can never be entirely sure that what you're fishing on is actually totally clear. Yeah. The last thing I wanted was to be chucking out a rig and leaving it for two days, when in fact I'm just lying over the odd branch or twig and that would then cause the hook link to sit up yeah. and look really quite unnatural. This is just soft enough to lie over any contours on the bottom, sticks, pebbles, yeah. but you've still got the stiffness in the hook link that will give the fish problems when yeah. they're trying to get rid of the rig. Yeah, sounds very good. So you, you've also pin, pinned it down with a couple of little bits of uh, tungsten putty there as well. Yeah, just to try just, and keep just it down on the bottom. Peace of mind, really. Yeah. And so when you're fishing over, um, yeah, if you were to say you're just pulling out quite a large bed of boilies, is this the sort of length you'd use? Do you sort of vary the length much on this rig? Or? Yeah, definitely. Uh, if I'm fishing over quite a lot of bait in quite a tight area, then you'd shorten it down to perhaps, say, five inches, just because the fish are going to yeah. be moving about less. Uh, if you're right. fishing it in something a bit dirtier, then something that long, maybe even a touch longer, just yeah. to make sure that the hook's like sitting nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've actually caught fish on this with it as short as two inches when fishing in the edge over sort of a pellet, broken boilie type yeah. mixture. When they're just hoovering. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, good angling, mate. So on the um, hook bait, I see, I see you've got a, a little yellow pop-up there. Um, so does that balance the hook? How, how does, you know, to, or is that a visual thing? Why do you do that? It's a bit of both. It does add a bit of buoyancy. Yeah. The hook should sit like that, with the hook underneath the bait. So it's almost disguising the hook yeah, as well. Yeah, it helps it? to disguise yeah. it. It's not critically balanced properly. It just gives enough buoyancy for the hook bait to act naturally. The yeah. last thing I want is something that's far too buoyant that will flap around when a big fish is feeding and disturbing the area. Yeah, I don't mean Because yeah. then you, you know, it's just going to look totally unnatural. It's going to be sort of wafting around above their heads, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I do want it to sit on the bottom, but I want it to have about the same amount of buoyancy that a freebie would. Yeah. So the fish, basically just to make it act as naturally as possible. Um, a bit of yellow, uh, something I started doing last year, quite a few people have talked about using a bit of colour, yeah. a bit of colour on your hook baits to uh, just make it stand out I suppose. I started doing it and although you wouldn't be able to see if it made a difference out in the lake really unless you can sit yeah. and watch from a boat, um, I've caught a few fish doing it and uh, it's certainly something that I'm confident mm. doing. It seems to be a theory that um, if, you, if you're just using, say, red fish meal boilies, and you've got a bed of boilies out there, mm. um, maybe a pop-up, a bright yellow or white pop-up, 
or like you say a, a normal bottom bait tipped with some sort of colour yeah. that is quite often the first bait to go because it's almost it's a curiosity thing they come in and yeah. they see that that stands out and the only way they can pick it up is with their mouth isn't it so yeah, it's, exactly it's, it's a very very effective method that you know, it seems to work well everywhere mm. yeah. well it looks, looks the part of that rig mate and obviously done very well so uh, thanks for showing us that well pleasure Dave thanks very much Today we're joined by Tim Harris, venue controller of Reading District's Pindra Lagoon, the home of the brute, the mighty mirror carp that's been out to over 50 pounds. You've done a bit of filming before though, haven't you Tim? Yeah, I was an extra on Pride and Prejudice. 